Hi guys, it is LPS Kirby Button here. Now, I've been wanting to do this kind of video for like a long time and I didn't think I was going to have to do it now. But with, okay, so for those who don't know, the Game School of Dragons on June 30th of this year is going to be shut down entirely. And that means you cannot play the game anymore, period. And I've had this game for such a long time, and it really broke my heart to hear that. So I decided that it's now or never. I'm making this video, even if it takes me forever to film, kills my battery, whatever. This is a video showcasing every single dragon I've got, which is one of every single kind of dragon in the game. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to sort of do something similar to what Silver Willowing did in his very first All of My Dragon series. We will go in order by class, alphabetically, and showcase every dragon, say a little bit about them, and yeah. Now, within each class, I will be going alphabetical by species. So, yeah. I know that probably some of you want LPS videos, but they take forever to film, as I stated in my last video. And I'm going to do this. So, yeah. This is probably going to be very long, but I'm going to try and make it as short as possible. Um, but yeah, let's get on with this thing. Okay, I'm gonna throw out a, dis a quick disclaimer. All of my dragons can be out and about on different islands or stay in the stables whenever they want, especially nocturnal dragons, but they must be back for breakfast and dinner, and I should also say, I love all of my dragons, and all of them get along and love to be around each other, so none of them are really, like, complete menaces. So, yeah. First... We'll start with the boulder class, and we have Spike, the Catastrophic Quaken. Spike is a very sweet dragon, but he doesn't quite realize just how big he is. So when he wants to play, he'll really just shove you. But he's still a big sweetheart and a bit of a dweeb deep down. He's very good friends with my Prickle Boggle and Thunder Creed, particularly because of this symbiotic relationship with the prickle boggle and just being so similar with the thunder feed oh no next we have moose the crimson gore gutter this guy is just spike to the extreme <laughs> He looks so intimidating, but he's really just a playful and giant, oversized puppy dog. However, like Spike, Bestie doesn't really understand that he's a beast when it comes to size. I mean, look at him. I love him dearly, and all my dragons love to play with him, but he's getting better when it comes to being aware about his size. And now we have Lord Afterlife, the Elder Sentinel. He is just so protective of everyone. It's in his nature. I have been working with him to lighten up a bit because I don't want him to stress himself out. He's very attentive and caring and almost literally a rock to lean on when the dragons feel upset. And he's a great listener. Overall, he's a fantastic, hard-working dragon. Next we have Lava the Eruptodon. This guy's pretty chill, mostly just eats magma and such all day. He's still very nice and likes to hang out with my other dragons, and when he's with me, we work very well together. 
I haven't been spending as much time with him as I probably should have, but he still really likes to be around me, and I'm very fond of him and how well he works with others. Now we have Radish, the Grapple Grounder. This man... Woo! He can be a bit stuck up sometimes, but it's never with my dragons. He's really weird like that, because with my dragons, he views everyone as equal, but with other people's dragons, he's evaluating how good they are at any and everything. He's been getting better, especially since both my leader dragon, if you will, and me don't tolerate it, but nonetheless, he's still a derpy thing bat. Freaking love it. And this is Widow, the Grave Mapper. Finally, a girl here. Now, she actually prefers to be alone more than others, but she still likes to be around my other dragons at feeding times. She particularly clings to me, and we have a great bond, but with anyone else's dragons, she just doesn't want to deal with them. The most amount of aggression you'll get is a growl from her, but that really only happens when she's really annoyed. However, she's pretty relaxed and, I mean, let's be real, super cool looking. And now we have Pop's Coal, the Grant's Coal. I got him from Icestorm Island. Um, the expansion pack, and he's been quite attached to me to the point where it's on a little intrusive. But we've worked on it, and we're good now. He's very friendly and outgoing, and he's very grateful for the little sunscreen that I made for him, which is something I use for all dragons that are in snow or water and would dry up like a raisin if out of it. Um, yeah. So he really likes being able to be in the sun and play without any problems. Also, yes, I know the name Pop School is cliche for a school, but it is just so fun for me to say, Popsicle is my Gronksicle. Now we have Cupcake the Gronkle. This Gale is so sweet and caring that she might as well be nicknamed Miss Congeniality. <laughs> I love working with her because she's just so friendly and works so well with others. However, I haven't been spending much time with her at all because of events and such. But I still hold her very dear and she greets me so warmly every day and I sincerely appreciate it. Now we have Diesel, the Gore Gripper. I mean, holy crap. he's well aware of how cool he looks, but does he give a crap? Nope. He just wants to play, especially a game of tag. He too is quite unaware of how big he is, but he is certainly more aware than some others, which is nice. He's pretty protective. And not that social around other people's dragons, only really my own. But he's very responsible and respectful, which makes him a great partner overall. And now we have Rocky, the hot purple. Lazy, sleepy, and nap time. Those three words are his mood, his vibe, all the above. He's very sweet and loves to be around others, and he's great for helping me get rid of some scrap metal. But he's not really the one uh, to jump at the opportunity to do a task. He's still very docile and obedient, very gentle, but he's more my little reading pail on a lazy day than one to do tasks with. Next we have Chanter the Humbanger. First of all, what the frick is this dragon? The poor thing can't move without using their wings to push themselves forward and dragging their tail 
And even when they're sitting, they're still flapping their wings. The humbanger might be one of the most unfortunate hybrids in this world. Nonetheless, Chanter is still a very nice and charming dragon. And is so positive every day that dragons love being around him. He especially loves his confetti fireball. And can honestly make anybody smile with how he pushes through his struggles. And with, with what kind of dragon he is. Now this is Rue, the Hush Boggle. He honestly finds so much joy in helping others and can really pull through as a leader. He does play pretty rough sometimes on his own time, but he knows his boundaries, and I really like that whenever he messes up and makes a mistake, he owns up to it. And even from the time he was a baby. I know, I know, he looks a little freaky. Might be someone's sleep paralysis demon, but he is a very, very good dragon. This is Pomplamoose, the Ridge Sniffer. Ah uh, yes, a dragon with a tail so thin there's no way it's supporting that boulder. Anyway, she is quite a shy dragon, and while she likes being around my dragons, she's still so quiet and practically hides behind me in public. I feel like it's a confidence thing, and I've been working with her because I understand where she's coming from in being so shy, but it's taking a while. I wish she was more outgoing because she's so sweet, but hey, we're getting there. Now we have Earthquake, the Screaming Death. Gosh, I have so many memories of doing hourly battles with him. He's since retired from those battles, ever since I got my Sea Stormer, but he and my Scaldron used to do all the hourly battles together. And now they've joined me in Dragon Tactics, and I'm so appreciative of them. Earthquakes, very good friends with my thunder drum, likely because they're so loud. So I have to remind them constantly to quiet down. But he's such a strong, hard worker deep down, and he truly cares about everyone. Even if he gets a little snappy at other people and their dragons seem to decide to be jerks. Now we have Hercules the Sentinel. He really looks up to Lord Afterlife and practically, like, follows him everywhere. Is Lord Afterlife bothered? No. In fact, the two of them are really close, and Hercules, being true to his species, is very protective and is overall very strong and friendly, but he knows his boundaries, so don't worry about that. Now we have Zebra the Shovel Helm. Zebra is very shy. He's basically a gentle giant, but he's pretty quiet, even with my own dragons. However, unlike Pomplamoose, he's more willing to be social, but only if he really has to. He's still so sweet and respectful, and anyone who has ever met him will say he's one of the sweetest dragons they've ever met. And I wholeheartedly agree. Next is Cliff, the Snaffle Fang. This guy is very energetic, and out of all my Boulder class dragons, is the biggest life of the party one ever did see. Like, I swear, he's so bouncy all the time. He does know when to be serious, though, and he's still very good at helping others. It's honestly very impressive just how happy he is all the time. So to see him sad is a rarity, but... We all know what cheered them up. This is Box Boxer the Thunderpede. 
Now, because he and Spike are both very strong and powerful dragons, they are very good friends, and he also loves being around like Prickle Boggle as well. He is actually a pretty joyful brute, I guess, considering he sometimes acts like someone who goes to the gym, but one can see him dancing around a little bit all the time. I mean, look at that. <laughs> I know, and heck, he knows that Thunderfeeds aren't necessarily the prettiest dragons. But I admire just how carefree he is despite that reputation with his species. Now we have King the Whispering Death. Now, despite his rather spooky appearance, he's actually a pretty cool and chill guy. Now, out, out and about outside the stables, he's going wild in the Whispering Death tunnels that are out and about, but for the most part, he's pretty relaxed. He gets along really well with my change ring, just sneaking around and generally being goofballs. And I'm really glad that I got to catch him and train him after finding his egg in the tunnels. Now we are moving on over to the mystery class, and the first dragon of the mystery class is Metal, the Armor Wing. Now, a uh, fun fact, I was originally going to name him Grass due to his colors for some reason. I don't know why, so don't ask. School of Dragons wouldn't allow the name for some reason, though, but Metal is a much more fitting name. He, like a true armor wing, collects metal all the time. He had to make a bit of a system with my smothering smug breath and sword stealers, and they also like metal, as well as my sand buster, who just likes treasures, but they make it work, which is very admirable of him. He was rescued from hunters, so he's also a very grateful and good dragon. Next we have Chip the Bone Napper. Now, I named him Chip because the bones being put together like puzzle pieces for some reason made me think, quote unquote, chips. And the name stuck, so don't ask what goes through my head. I have no answers. I do love to say Chippo Boy in a weird British accent, and he's actually a very nice guy. Just so genuine all the time. He's a little messy because he collects so many bones, like they're stamps or something, but he somehow manages to organize them on occasion, and he's still a jolly guy. I don't know how I feel about this music being in the wilderness. Anyway, this is Buffy the Buffalord. He's very docile and gentle, and with a lot of training, he's still, he'll still remain calm, even when away from the herbs he loves. He slobbers a lot, though, and cleaning it up can get a wee bit annoying, but he's still a respectful guy. I was originally going to name him Fatty, but School of Dragons didn't allow that, I wonder why. And my sister loves Buffaloids and said I should name him Buffy, so now he's got a name as cute as he is. Now we have Batgirl the Cavern Crasher. She prefers to be more isolated, whether she's outside the stables or with me. It makes sense given that she's a Cavern Crasher even though her flammable slime isn't too messy, funny enough. But she's still nice and respectful to my dragons. She doesn't interact much with other people's dragons, though. I've trained her to only eat chicken eggs at this point, and she'll turn her nose up to any dragon eggs at school or outside the stable. So, I'm pretty proud of her. Actually, I'm very proud of her. Now we have Junior the Changeling. 
first of all, it's Junior, not J-R, as School of Dragons wouldn't allow the full spelling for some reason. He's very good friends with King, and he's quite sneaky, loving to spook people whenever he can. He's not mean about it, though, just silly. And, uh, aside from that, he's pretty chill and cool, and very fun to be around. Now we have Smile, the Chimeragon. I call his kind of Chimeragon Bewildagon due to being a mix between a Bewildagon and Sentinel, and that the Chimeragon and Dawn of New Riders came before him. I named him Smile because he always looks like he's smiling, and he's so bubbly, admirable, and playful that he literally makes other smile. A lot of my dragons look up to him, and even though it's a bit difficult to see over his head for all, because I mean, what? We still make it work. Now we have Kangaroo the Death Song. Yes, they, there's a glitch with some of the dragon's eyes. I don't know why, but just deal with it. The name is because he bounces around like a kangaroo to me. Don't give me that look. Hey, I'm just kidding. Anyway, I rescued him on Melody Island, but because I worked with him from the get-go to not eat dragons, he literally doesn't even think about that. So, I never had an issue with that. He's very noble and can be pretty goofy sometimes and a very pretty dragon to look at and he's also very good friends with my slither song now we have raymond the jamillion he's very silly and crazy but he's also very clever and creative much like any Jamillion, he's very social and loves being around other dragons, especially other Jamillions. And he is rather clingy to my dragons sometimes, but they don't mind because he's not annoying about it. I think he's very precious and a pretty dragon to look at, so yeah. This is Poisson, the Dread Strider. <laughs> this boy loves that he's both fast when running and can fly, but while he used to kind of brag about it, he doesn't anymore. Now, he's still very confident, he's just not cocky, which is good. He's pretty chill and honestly just acts so over when it comes to other people's dragons being cocky. He's kind of sassy, but it's very amusing and pretty valid. Also, he's named Poisson, which is French for fish, because, well, let's be real, the Dread Strider looks like one. Next, we have Sky, the Flight Mare. She loves to spook people and other dragons, including myself, but it's all in good fun. She especially loves Dreadfall, and goes nuts when the time comes around. Skye loves to fly around, and she gets her algae outside the stables and brings them back with her every time, so that struggle is out of my hands. She's very playful, pretty, and overall just fascinating. This is Aurora, the Frostmare. She's very relaxed and really doesn't like doing anything she doesn't want to. Like, she'll still do it, but you can tell she doesn't feel like it. The job is still decent, and 
Okay, at least she doesn't complain. I love her colors, and she's a very nice and good dragon. And when she does want to do a da- a task. A task. She does a stellar job. Now we have broccoli and carrot. Broccoli is the head on the right. So the one on the right side of my axe there. And carrot is the head on the left, which is the head on the left side of my ex. The way these guys walk is just so funny to me. Like, <laughs> look at it. I can't. They just look so derpy. Heck, they act derpy too. They're very funny and love making others laugh, which is very helpful whenever anyone feels down that day. These boys are very lighthearted and just seem to always know how to comfort others, including themselves. <laughs> this is Goldine, the Golden Dragon. Yes, she's named after a Pokemon. She is so sassy all the time, it's just hysterical. Sure, does she look kind of odd? Yes. But she doesn't care. She's so caring of others and just wants others to be happy. Which means that being sassy is sometimes all she needs to do to bring a few laughs. She's just so funny and I'm absolutely living for it. This is Thunder and Lightning, my hideous simple bag. My third dragon ever, wow. These two dudes are pretty different, but they bounce off each other so well. Thunder, the head on the right, or the one that breathes gas, is more stern yet gentle, while Lightning, the head on the left, or the one that leads uh, the little sparks to ignite said gas, is more goofy and rough. However, they work together so beautifully and love to joke with each other. Everyone enjoys the presence and... All three of us work very well together. Now we have Pink Eye, the albino hobgobbler. He tends to follow me around everywhere whenever he can, and he, it's like he freaking teleports. However, he's still a very lovable guy and a cuddle bug. He hangs out with my other hobgobbler a lot, and he just kind of exists aside from that. He's named Pink Eye because of his eye color from being albino. Jeez, I'm, I feel like I'm talking about name origins a bunch. <laughs> now we have Emmett, the other hobgobbler. He's pretty chill, just kind of exists. Spends a lot of time with Pink Eye. He's also a cuddle bug. Um... Yeah, nothing crazy exciting about him, but I love him. He's very nice, stares at things a lot, and he has this little board of wood that he'll chew on a bunch, but yeah, he's not aggressive, annoying, or bad. He's just a good guy. Now we have Sandy the Sandbuster. He loves the sunscreen I made so he can go out in the sun with no issue. He does steal treasure to bury underground, but he's good at checking to make sure it's not wanted. He's pretty good at sharing with my smothering smoke breath in particular, but for the most part, their interests lie in fairly different categories. He's nice, curious about new things, and makes beautiful glass sculptures and such. Now we have Velvet the Scroll Napper. She's super epic and very outgoing, but also so nice and accepting of everyone. She can be pretty protective of others when she needs to be, but she's never aggressive unless she absolutely has to be. She's super cool looking and acts very much like a tomboy, and she has all the reasons to be deemed as someone who's legitimately cool. 
Now we have Butterfly, the Slither Song. She hangs out with Kangaroo a lot, and she also has been trained since the time she was hatched to not eat dragons. And she is now appalled by the idea of eating dragons because she loves my other dragon so much. She's very nice, pretty to look at, I mean look at those wings, and loves to make music with Kangaroo, and the two of them also occasionally make incredible music with my song wing as well. Now we have Viper the Sneck, I mean Slitherwing. Now before I continue, we have made it work regarding his venom poison all over his skin. He has been trained to control how much venom he has out, and he finds it so cool that he can even do that. And now he can play with his friends without any risk of potentially poisoning them lethally! Yay! So that's grand. He's very playful and fun-loving, and his face when he's done with someone else's, dra someone else's dragon's bullcrap is so funny. And he's just very enjoyable. Also, Snick. Now we have Snowball, the Smothering Smoke Breath. He's very friendly and cute, but he can be a little rascal sometimes because he steals a fair amount of scrap metal. He's made it work with my Armor Wing and Sword Stealer, so he actually brings some metal to, well, metal, and keeps some for his own nest or gives swords to my Sword Stealer. So he's basically just a good dragon to make compromises with, since he can defuse small slash petty arguments very well, being able to control his smoke amazingly. Now we have Cloudy, Lucky, Rain, and Wind, the Snap Trapper. Four names for four heads with these boys. They somehow all have the same emotion at a given time, like they all share a brain cell. Well, no, they're all very intelligent, especially emotionally intelligent. They like to fill the room with a chocolate scent, since they can do that, just to make others feel good, and they really like playing in the rain and mud. It's thankfully not a hassle to clean them, and they're just adorable. Now we have Xerneas, the Songwing. Oh my word, his colors are gorgeous. I could stare at them all day. I love it. I love it. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, another rescue rider's dragon means one named after a Pokemon. Xerneas just looks so done with everything and confused with existence. It's very amusing. He's ultimately very polite and makes a fair amount of music, and occasionally does so with my Death Song and Slither Song. Look at the colors. The colors. Now we have Goldilocks, the Sweet Death. Now, despite her interesting appearance, she is actually very sweet and kind. Huh. Kinda like the name of her species. Sweet, her personality. Death, her appearance. Anyway, she does have a bit of a temper, but it's never really with my dragons, and she's still very kind and caring, like, 99% of the time. Now we have Cutler, the Sword Stealer. Why the Sword Stealer is in the Mystery class and not the Sharp class, I'll never know. Anyway, Cutler only steals swords, and he used to be quite selfish about it. But then, through training, we made it so that he isn't like that. Any swords he doesn't want, he gives it to my Smothered Smoke Breath and Armor Wing. Very rarely to my Sand Buster, because I mean Sandy doesn't really give a crap about them. And some of his best swords he gives to me. And honestly, with how pleasant and sweet he is now, watching him show off his sword collection is just so precious. Now we have Hook and Jab, the Zipple Wraith. These two bad boys just cause so much chaos, it's insane. Now... 
outside or inside the stables. It's at most harmless pranks. Outside of the stables, I swear it's knocking down the biggest possible tree they can find with just one fireball. They never actually hurt anyone, but my word, they are so full of energy. <laughs> but hey, when they work hard at tap, it shows in the best way possible. Now we're transitioning over to the sharp class. And the first sharp class dragon here is Eggplant the Bone Stormer. Okay, I thought the Bone Stormer hero skin was purple, and I pre name all my dragons, so I decided to keep the name despite the color being green. Are there green eggplants? I don't know. Anyway, Eggplant here is pretty stubborn and can be pretty petty and ridiculous, but deep down, he's pretty cool and kind of rad. And I'm working with him to make him less difficult, <laughs> for lack of a better term. <laughs> Now we have Ace, the Deathly Gale Slash. He's so bouncy and cute and full of energy, it's just so precious. He's so loyal and loves to spend time around other dragons, other people, anybody. Now, he ain't a pushover because he can defend himself pretty well. And if he were a human, his comebacks could knock someone out cold. But he's mostly just a big baby and I love him. And now we have Blackberry, the devilish dervish. Now, he was my second dragon I ever got. At the time, devilish dervish eggs cost coins, not gems. And I worked so hard through quests and racing with my first dragon to get him. And I was so excited when he finally hatched. He is so kind, so loyal, and so incredible. And although I haven't been spending as much time with him as I used to, I still love every moment I do spend with him. This is Cinnamon, the Grim Nasher. She can be pretty cross and stern with other dragons. Uh, she doesn't mind other people, or rather doesn't give a frick about them. Since Grim Nashers are pack dragons, she's very close and involved with my dragon than me, but she doesn't really care about anyone outside of that. She do be kind of spicy, like cinnamon. <laughs> I have tried or trained not to attack and eat other dragons as well, and she's very good. Now we have Pear the Prickle Boggle. He may be slow, but he's very caring and kind, and is so willing to help others. He's very close to my catastrophic Quaken and Thunderpeed, and he's just so helpful, responsible, and trustworthy. He's loving, and as slow as he is, he still tries to rush to someone's aid when they need it. He is the guy who constantly asks, what can I do to help? And I really appreciate that. This is Lime the Rain Cutter. He is pretty chill and mostly just plays around doing nothing. He'll occasionally play and converse, and he's nice, but he mostly just sits there all day. However, a rainstorm comes and this big boy is outside playing in the rain, scooping up mother and worms, running around with my other dragons, and being a joy to be around. Guess rain cutters really do love the rain, don't they? <laughs> now we have Silver the Razor Whip. Oh, the memories I've made with her, my fifth dragon ever. She's so gorgeous, so loyal, faithful, protective without being a helicopter, and just incredible. She's just a joy to be around, and she's very sassy when she wants to be, which is always hysterical. She's quite strong and very much wants to protect others and just truly represents everything great about Razor Whips.
Now we have Leaf Cutter, the Scuttle Claw. First, to explain the name, the back scales look like leaves. And because he's in the sharp class, you get the cutter, Leaf Cutter. Second, he is so childish and playful and friendly, and everyone loves his vibe and energy. Scuttle Claws are generally very childish, so that's not abnormal, but he can actually be pretty responsible when he needs to be and is very reliable. Lastly, I love his colors. Love his colors. And I love him very dearly. Now we have Ocean the Shiver Tooth. This girl is just so done with everything. And yet, she's so funny about it. She loves to spend time with my dragons and me, especially outdoors. But anytime some other dragon is being a nuisance, she just gives them this little care, this little glare, like, mate, what is this frickery? It's so funny. She's a very adventurous and pretty dragon, but most of all, she is a complete mood. Now we have Lily, the Speed Stinger. Her name was going to be spelled L-I-L-Y, but for some reason it wasn't allowed, so it's now spelled L-I-L-I-E. Anyway, despite being unable to fly, she is still able to race with other dragons, even if it's not in Thunder Run Racing. Since Speed Stingers live in packs, she's very social, kind, and protective. She can be snarky with other students and their dragons, but for the most part, she's pleasant and very precious. Now we have Stormy, the Storm Cutter. I remember working so hard to get enough gems to get her, and when I finally did, I was so happy. She's prideful while still being humble, sweet and sassy and playful while still knowing when to be serious. She is everything that makes Stormcutter so amazing. I love spending time with her and just flying around, and she loves being with me. Everyone around her loves her, and she really lives up to her potential, and she is truly an icon. Now we have Snake, the Timberjack. I'm sorry, I named him before the Slitherwings discovered, don't at me. Anyway, or anywho, he freaking loves to fly around. And can stay in the air for hours, which is great for long distance travel. He's, he'll still recognize when I need a break and is very nice about it. He is very quiet, gentle, and helpful, particularly with cutting down trees and lumber, which is great. And he loves back scratches since his wings are so huge and he can't reach. So, yeah. Now we are flying on over to the Stoker class. And. The first Stoker class dragon I have to showcase to all of you is Remington the Abami Bumble. It's Remy on School of Dragons because apparently Remington wasn't accepted. But anyway, fun fact, I named him after my dog. No, my dog does not reflect the Abami Bumble's unfortunate appearance. Anyway, this Remington, the dragon, is very nice and positive despite the horrid misfortune of having a neck. That frickin' Thin. I don't know how he does it. He somehow doesn't feel much pain from the lack of support. And with how bouncy and goofy he is, with a positive look on the world, I really admire him for that. Now we have Flamethrower the Fire Terror. He's very fun and likes to be around other people than my dragons. Fire terrors are pack based. He's especially good friends with my night terror. And they're absolute nutcases together. It's really cute and amusing. 
He does like to consume fire and spit it back out at targets like a literal flamethrower, hence the name. And he's legit a nut job, but I love it. Now we have Fireball, the Fireworm Queen. This biscuit treats every one of my dragons like they're a fireworm of hers. It's insane. She thankfully isn't overbearing since we worked on it to make sure that she wasn't. And she's fairly okay with other dragons that aren't my own. With my own? Fully regal. With other dragons? Just chillin'. With other fireworm queens? Bombastic side eye. Never aggressive, but doesn't interact with them. But hey, she's still very noble. Now we have Sunny the Flame Whipper. She is always climbing on walls and being crazy. But she's super sweet and actually a very good listener. So a fair amount of my dragons go to her to just rant about something that happened outside the stables. And she listens. I really admire her. She's very... She very much acts sunny because her personality is just so bright and bubbly. And I mean, let's be real. She looks like a gecko and it's fan freaking tastic. Now we have Grape the Hubble Grunt. Before I continue, why does the Hubble Grunt have the thread tail model? Now, continuing. Since the Hubble Grunt is rare in the Stoker class, Grape does have a bit of pride, but it's not enough to become cocky. She has high self esteem, but she's not selfish. She's still rather sensitive from her fan that can basically predict the future a split second before it happens. That's a thing. Look it up. It's, it's not false. Yes, it's a thing. Look it up. I dare you. But her personality ain't sensitive. It's strong, yet gentle, and we're here for it. Now we have Apple the Mold Ruffle. He spends a lot of time by volcanoes, which just happens to be where I shouldn't be because that would likely kill me. Does he hate me? No. In fact, he loves to hear me spill the tea about other students who are being ridiculous. He just happens to like being more solitary, but he likes socializing at mealtimes. He's ironically very cool, if you get what I mean. Now we have Gumdrop the Monstrous Nightmare. Ugh, the memories with this sweet yet fiery girl. Her personality is spicy in all the best ways. Now, I normally don't like spicy things, but her personality, I live for it. She's more of a conserved, classy hook fang. Um, but when she's mad, she'll, you know. I named her Gumdrop because when she sleeps, um, while on fire, she just kind of looks like a fiery gumdrop to me. So, yeah. She's a legend. Now we have Panda the Night Terror. Don't ask about the name, I don't know. She's very playful and sweet and loves to be around others. She's a bit shy around other people and their dragons, but with mine, she's just so sweet and bubbly. She hangs out with Flamethrower a lot, and when she does spend time with me, she prefers to just lay in the shade and rest her head on my lap. She, much like my other nocturnal dragons, is more active at night, but she's not noisy at all, which I appreciate. Now we have Ghost, the Silver Phantom. Can I just say, the Silver Phantom looks so cool. Okay, that bit's done. Ghost is pretty quiet and spends most of his time in the sky. He might as well act like a whole mystery because he really likes flying at night and feeling the cold night air go against him and feeling the wind go through his wings. He's very polite and honest and just a pleasant good dragon overall.
Now we have Sasha the Singed Tail. Her name was going to have one A after the S at School of Dragons, why it had to have two, not me. Anyway, Sasha is a very outgoing dragon. She's got a lot of personality, but it's not too much to be annoying or anything. Although, she can be quite loud sometimes, but she knows her limits. And, I mean, look at her. She's a big, adorable derp. Now we have Terry the Terrible Terror. She may be small, but she's got attitude. She'll set you straight if you're being dumb. However, she is still a sweetheart and loves to snuggle with me. She'll play around with other dragons by crawling around and generally being silly. She's also very good and efficient with terror mail. She truly does know and show people that size doesn't always count. So, amen to that, sister. Now we have Watermelon, the Tefumerang. She is very relaxed and will occasionally help others out because she just likes to make other people smile. I wish she was more involved than she is, though. Because she has so much potential and it seems like she doesn't see it while my other dragons and me do. She gets a little better each day though with constant praise. And she really does act like a metaphorical mother with how protective and patient she can be. And hey, her fire is really awesome and she eats all my eels so that's fantastic. Now we're going to segue on over to the Strike class. And the first dragon of the Strike class is Tusker, who is my Death Gripper. He is so goofy and playful, but he can be a little rough sometimes and pretty freaking protective of me whenever we're around other people and their dragons. Considering he's a Death Gripper. I managed to get the prey drive out of him, so if he does use it, it's on toys or something. He happened to be interested in me after coming from Grimmel, so he was a bit of a challenge, but I like challenges, and I'm very proud of what he's accomplished. Now we have Lyrie the Light Fairy. Lyrie is my nickname for her, by the way. When she visits from the Hidden World with Toothless, she mostly spends time with the Dragon Riders and very much enjoys their company, but she is skittish as heck. As heck, I say, with other students. There are only a few select students that she'll be around, much less let them ride her, and I'm one of them! I guess she just feels more comfortable around my dragons and me, and you know what? I'm glad she's getting used to other people after her trauma with Grimmel. And now we have Fluffy, my very own Light Fury. I am gonna say, regarding the name, when I first saw the Light Fury, the little light aura around her made me think, huh, I know she isn't, but she looks a little fluffy. There. You have your answer. Now, Fluffy here is like the exact polar opposite of Lyrie. She's pretty sweet and loves being around people and other dragons. Can she be a little skittish when meeting new people, yeah? But unlike Lyrie, she warms up to them a lot faster and very much enjoys being around them instead of just being comfortable. This lighting doesn't exactly do her justice. I mean, look at her. She's gorgeous. She's absolutely gorgeous. Now we have the one, the only, Toothless the Night Fury. Obviously, he's not my dragon. When he visits from the Hidden World, he mostly spends time with Hiccup. But he tends to visit me a lot. He works very well with everyone in my stables, and he may be the alpha, but he still listens to and respects my leader, and he's just a giant cat in a nutshell. 
However, I will say, if I had my own Night Fury, it would be a girl and her name would be Sugar. Because she'd be as sweet as Sugar. And now we have Rough Runner the Nightlight. This boy is a sleepy boy. And he and his siblings freaking love spending time with my dragons whenever they visit. He tends to just sleep in the nightlight stable all day, and it's such a mood. He's my favorite nightlight, not just because he was the first one I saw, but because he's just so relatable. I mean, if I could sleep every day, I definitely would. I actually have two Rough Runners due to some weird, like, glitch with the nightlight expansion pack that you could choose your own afterwards and I'm like ah, I already have all three so <laughs> yeah that other rough runner will forever be a baby but anyway if I had my own nightlight that looked like him he'd be a shy quiet boy named galaxy now we have dart the nightlight I used to think dart was a boy not gonna lie but anyway she is so curious and adventurous about everything, and it's so precious. She's sometimes too curious, but it's nothing that I can't handle. I love the little sounds she makes, and she's just so freaking cute. I mean, look at her. She's adorable. If I had my own nightlight that looked like her, it'd be a crazy energetic boy named Indy. Now we have Pouncer the Nightlight. Not gonna lie, I used to think he was a girl. But anyway, he's a very rowdy goofball. He tends to play around with Rough Runner, but on occasion, he'll play with the more energetic dragons. Because, let's be real, Rough Runner is anything but energetic. And Pouncer is rarely ever sitting still in the stables. I definitely think his name is very fitting, though. If I had a nightlight that looked like him, it'd be a sassy, dramatic girl named Carlotta. Now we have Chocolate the Skrill. One of the first things she did was roll around in some crates of chocolate I had. So she smelled like it, hence the name. She can be very silly like that with her friends, since she legit doesn't care about what anyone has to say about her personality, and she's pretty easygoing. But outside the stables, she stares people down like they've been enemies for years. She's fairly protective, but not enough to be too aggressive unless she absolutely has to be. And she really represents Skrill as well. Now we have Snow White, the Snow Wraith. She's a very nice gale, very kind, very caring. Pretty skittish around those she doesn't know, but she won't really be aggressive to them or anything. She can be pretty frickin' strong when she needs to be, but she's mostly just kinda chilling out, no pun intended and rela relaxing amongst her friends. She's fast and rather elegant, so it's a win-win. Now we've got Scorpion, the triple strike. He's fast, he's furious, and he's in a frenzy almost every day. He loves to challenge himself with things such as targets and racing, but not too much to wear himself out, and he gets a lot of self-esteem from it, but he isn't cocky or overly prideful. I hatched him after his mother gave me the egg, and I'm sure with how loyal and noble he is, she would be as proud of him as I am. Now we have Cookie the Wooly Howl. Oh, I love her. We've been through so much together, training her to excel in dragon tactics, and she works so hard and smart, I can really trust her. 
Holy Howls are probably my favorite dragons that have the uh, Fury model, similar to that of the Night Fury. And she truly shows why that is. She's loyal, highly intelligent, responsible, a hard worker, super kind to everyone, protective when she needs to be, and just so lovely and understanding around everyone. She truly is an icon in my stables. We are now going to swim on over to the title class. And the first dragon in the title class is Queen the Sand Wraith. I know, I know. I don't know why the U had to be replaced with a W. I question School of Dragons a lot about it. Anyway, Queen really does live up to her name because she just expresses how much of a leader she is in everything she does. She is so willing to help others and also let others have their spotlight, and I really admire her for that. She and I race a lot during events, and she's just great overall. Now we have Milk, the Scaldron. He and I have so much history together. I got him after getting the thousand sheep and thunder run racing and I was so excited. I've trained him not to eat sickle and sea shockers and he really followed through on that. And then we spent so much time doing the hourly battles along with my screaming death and he has worked so incredibly hard. It's just amazing. He has since retired from the hourly battles and now does dragon tactics where he continues to be amazing. He's so nice and trustworthy, very thankful for the sunscreen so he doesn't dry up like a raisin, and really, he's truly memorable in the best way. And now, we have a Claire, which is supposed to have an accent over the E. And Blixed. Ah, the hourly battle replacement. And the only multi-headed dragon that's female. These two are such hard workers. And they're really good in dragon tactics too. They're very humble about it and so sweet. So reliable, so amazing and awesome. And every other word like that I could think of. And I just freaking love them. These girls also love to be around others. And I couldn't have asked anything more from these two and I will cherish every memory I have with them. And here we have Neon Rainbow the Shock Jaw. She is very snarky, sassy, and kind of stubborn. She doesn't always want to do things but she'll still do them with the most passive aggressive look I ever did see. But hey, at least she doesn't complain. And she does a good job. She's not very fond of people or dragons, only my dragons and me. With my dragons, she's very serious yet funny, and she does show very loving affection on occasion, so she does care a lot about us deep down. And this is Moomane, the Sliquifier. She used to be so scared of everything, especially Scaldrons. But after a lot of training, she's now quite adventurous and actually gets along great with my Scaldron, who, God bless it, is, was very patient during that training. She's very cute and kind and loves to spend time with others exploring different islands. I'm very proud of where she is now, and hey, she looks great, especially the colors. Now we have Tornado, the Thunder Drone. This boy is very loud. He's very close with my screaming death because of it, but they know their boundaries, which is nice. 
even though he's deaf, he's still very understanding and kind and very obedient, which I very much appreciate. So basically, even though he can be kind of crazy, he knows when it's okay to be crazy and when it's time to be serious, which is good. And this is Blueberry the Tide Glider. Now she do be liking that sunscreen I made for her and other dragons that can't be in the sun for that long. Um, anyway, she's fairly solitary and doesn't really like interacting with other people or dragons during the day except during meal times. During meal times, she's very social and likes listening to the events of someone's day, my dragons, or me, and expressing her own experiences. Why she'd rather be alone during the day, I'll never know, but, but hey, as long as she's happy, I'm happy. And here we have Shannon the Windwalker. She acts like such a tomboy, I swear. She likes being very sporty and adventurous, spending a lot of her days outdoors. She's constantly exploring and not acting at all feminine. <coughs> cough, cough. I'm like, Lyrie, cough, cough. <clears throat> She's still super sweet and very inclusive with everyone, making sure that everyone has a great time when she hangs out with them, which is great. All right, we have found our way to the tracker class. We're nearing the end here. All right, these species aren't in alphabetical order, but you'll understand it a bit. So this dragon right here is Seaweed the Mudraker. He prefers to spend most of his time alone, but he's still very polite and nice. He can definitely find things in water, which he gladly helps with, which is super appreciated. He's very kind, obedient, and gets along with everyone, but during the day, he just tends to spend his time in swamps alone. But hey, if he likes it and he's happy, that's great, because I just want him to be happy. And here we have Strawberry, the Rumblehorn. Um... So she's super protective of people and wants to make sure people are safe all the time. She's not like overly protective of people or stupid worried all the time, but she does check to see if everything's alright a fair amount of the time. She's super sweet and very faithful and she's also very strong and pretty much like a bloodhound. She can find anything and loves to help out others and I really admire her. And now we have Coco, the Deadly Natter. So she is my very first dragon I ever had and I just, words cannot properly describe how much I love her. She and I have spent so much time together, done so much together, that she and I have such a strong bond. From the moment she hatched, she and I were inseparable. As inexperienced as I was, she still loved me and was so patient, and now she's incredibly strong, incredibly fast, and our bond is so strong, she's essentially the literal alpha of our group. She gets so much respect, and everyone loves her because she's wise, encouraging, respectful, responsible, kind, caring, loving, independent, and just a born leader. She and I worked so hard to get my second dragon through a lot of quests and Thunder Run racing. She's been by my side constantly in dragon tactics and even outside of that, whether it be the good, the bad, or the ugly. She loves spending time with my other dragons, getting to know other people's dragons and the people themselves, but she still knows when to stop someone's ridiculousness because of her authority, when to get, when to get defensive because she's so protective and she's not stressed about it. But most of all, there's nothing she loves more than spending time with me. She and I have done everything together and I will cherish every moment 
we have spent together. Every single memory we share. The funny ones, the wholesome ones, the sad ones. All of them, just because they were with her. This might make me sound childish, because this is a game, but I don't care. After the game's gone, I'm going to miss her so much. I'll never forget her. I'll always remember her. And I love her beyond infinity. I will always love Coco. So that was all of my dragons in School of Dragons. Um, I mean, well, dishonorable mention to the random grand school that I got from a glitch that I nicknamed Imposter. Anyway, but that was all of them. And I have very thoroughly enjoyed this game. I want to thank School of Dragons for just really making my childhood special. And yeah, I will never forget any of the memories I had playing this game. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. So please comment, like, and subscribe. Um, give me suggestions for LPS videos if you have any. And let us never forget School of Dragons. And just thank you for watching. So let's say goodbye, Coco. Toodles.